ディズニー・ウェニー・ダ・プールディズニー・ウェニー・ダ・プールワンファイン・オーチャン・デイウェニー・ダ・プールサッオン・ア・ロックインフロント・オブ・ヒズ・ハウスインデ・ヘンドレット・エイカウォッドサムティング・シームド・トゥ・ビ・ロングインステッド・オブ・ヒズ・ユージャル・スマイルプーベア・ワーズ・ウェアリング・ア・
He took the balloon from Christopher Robin and began floating slowly upward. I'll be able to reach the bee's nest with this, he explained. But the bees will see you, shouted Christopher Robin. Yes, but with this mud all over me, they'd think I'm a little black rain cloud, laughed Winnie the Pooh as he floated higher and higher. Christopher Robin followed along below as the breezes blew poor bear toward the honey tree. When he drifted close enough to the hole, he reached in and pulled out a pile full of honey. Yum, yum, nothing like fresh honey, said the pool. Dripping honey everywhere, a swarm of angry bees flew out of the nest and buzzed threateningly around him. Christopher Robin, shouted Winnie the Pooh, I think the bees suspect something. They probably think that you are after their honey, the boy shouted back. By this time, a whole swarm of bees buzzed angrily around the pool. Christopher Robin, I have come to the conclusion that these are not the right sort of bees, said the pool, slapping away the angry insects. No, not at all a nice sort of bee, he proclaimed as the bee stung his nose. As the pool perched himself unsteadily on top of the drifting balloon, the swarm of bees suddenly attacked. Soon, Pooh heard a loud hissing noise as air began to escape from the balloon. Christopher Robin, called Winnie the Pooh, I think I will calm down now. Don't worry, poor bear, said the boy. Christopher Robin ran with outstretched arms in a cold pool just before he reached the ground. See the old bear, laughed the boy. Oh dear, sighed the pooh. If only I didn't like honey so much. But Winnie the Pooh was not the one to give up easily. As soon as his bee stings were better, he had another idea. Honey rims with bunny, thought Pooh. I think I'll go pay Rabbit a visit. Rabbit was just about to pour himself a cup of tea when Pooh popped his head into the rabbit hole. Anybody at home? he shouted. The startled rabbit spilled his tea. Oh no, not Pooh, he thought in alarm. He'll eat me out of house and home. But Pooh kept calling and rabbit realized that he couldn't avoid the hungry bear. How about lunch? asked the rabbit. Thank you, rabbit. I'm feeling a bit hungry, said the Pooh making himself at home. Rabbit brought out a jar of honey. Would you like some honey on your bread? He asked. Don't bother about the bread. I'll just take a tiny helping of honey, said Winnie the Pooh, tying a napkin around his neck. Rabbit poured out a small helping of honey. Pooh's face fell. When he saw the tiny golden dot. What's wrong? asked the rabbit. Well, I did mean a somewhat larger tiny helping, Pooh admitted. Rabbit handed the Pooh the jar. Perhaps you should just help yourself, he said. When the Pooh began eating honey, as soon as he finished one jar, he started on another. He ate and ate and ate until he was nearly covered with honey. Then he turned to Rabbit and said, Thanks so much. I think I'll be going now. Rabbit looked at Pooh's large to me, which was now even larger than usual. You are sure you won't have any more? Pooh looked around at the empty chairs. Is there any more? He asked. No, there isn't, answered the rabbit, shaking Pooh's sticky paw. Licking his paws, Pooh started to leave. Suddenly, rabbit heard a muffled shout. Help, I'm stuck. Sure enough, 
Pooh Bear was wedged in the entrance to Rabbit's house. That's what happens when you eat too much, he said, giving Pooh a push from behind. No, replied Pooh. This is what happens when you make your door too small. Rabbit pushed and Pooh struggled, but he was still stuck. Pooh was wedged in the hole so tightly that he didn't budge an inch. Finally, he began to yell for help. Soon, Owl arrived. Well, if it isn't Winnie the Pooh, hello, Owl, replied Pooh. Are you by any chance stuck? asked the Owl. Oh, no, just resting and thinking. That's all, replied the Bear. Yes, I'd say you were definitely in a tight spot, said Owl, taking a closer look. Back inside his house, Rabbit was starting, staring at the pool's red rear end. Oh dear, oh gracious, if I have to look at that, that thing's for some time. I might as well make the best of it, he muttered. Rabbit placed the branches on either side of the pool's bottom and put a frame around it. A hunting trophy, he explained stepping back to admire his work. That night, Pooh was still wedged in the hole when a gopher stopped by. I hear there's an excavation problem here. My name is Gopher, and here's my card. What's the problem? I'm the problem, said Pooh. I'm stuck in this doorway. Goofer dusted off the bear and tied a scarf around his head. Looks as if this may take several days, he said, opening his lunchbox. Several days? Got to put the pool. What have meals? No, thanks. I've brought mine with me, replied the goofer as he began to eat. Later that night, Goofer realized it would be very difficult to unwitch the pool. Staying only long enough to eat up the last few crumbs of his food, the goofer packed up and left. Oh, bother, yawned the poor bear. If only I didn't like honey so much, this never would have been, would, would, this never would have happened. When Christopher Robin learned of the poor bear's predicament, he came running to help. After much thought, the boy decided that the only solution was for Winnie the Pooh to lose weight. We are going to put you on a diet, Pooh said. Christopher Robin, and the diet means no honey, he declared firmly. Finally, as Rabbit was beginning to give up on ever using his front door again, Pooh began to budge. Christopher Robin, Kanga, and Iro tagged on Pooh from outside, while Rabbit pushed her from, from the inside. And with hearty, heavy hoo, heave hoo, Pooh was free at last. Several days later, as Winnie the Pooh strolled through the hundred acre wood, a great wind lifted to him right of his feet. Oh, goodness, I must have lost a lot of weight. I feel as light as a feather, said the surprised bear. And like a feather, Winnie the Pooh was swept up through the trees. It was a very blasty day, and the wind was blowing hard every minute. As he swirled above the ground, Pooh heard a familiar voice. Looking ahead, he saw his friend Piglet. Piglet, wait for me, shouted the Pooh as he reached out and grabbed the Piglet's scarf. Just then, a strong wind separated the two friends. As Pooh Bear went flying up towards the tree where Owl lived, Piglet hung, out, hung onto a branch with all his might. Owl poked his head out of the door. Nice of you to drop in, 
Winnie the Pooh, he said. Oh, and I see you've brought Piglet with you. Well, do come in. As Pooh and Piglet sat in Owl's house, they could feel the house swaying from side to side. Owl, in his rocking chair, didn't seem to notice. He was too busy telling them a long story about his relatives. I say, Owl, said Pooh, the house appears to be moving. Nonsense, declared Owl. This house is as solid as a rock. It will take more than a little breeze to blow it away. Just as Owl said this, an enormous gust of wind blew the roof off. All the cupboard doors flew open and the plates and the sauces, saucers came tumbling out. Before anyone could say a word, Pooh Bear, Piglet, and all were all blown out of the house. Pooh found his way home and hopped into his warm, snuggly bed. But the night was filled with the strange noises. One of those noises had never been heard before. Pooh, being a bear of very little brain, decided to invite the new sound in. He gathered up his courage and his pop gun and went to the door. Winnie the Pooh opened the door and peered out cautiously. He couldn't see anything but them. Before he knew what had hit him, a large creature with black stripes bounced on top of him, knocking him over. Hello, I'm a tiger, said the creature, looking down at the pool. That spell T I J O G R R R. Tiger, what's your name? My name is Winnie the Pooh, and you scared me, answered the pool. Of course, I scared you. Tigers are supposed to be scary, replied the bouncy tiger who really wasn't scary at all. The wonderful thing about the tigers, tiger is, I'm the only one, Tiger continued. Then, what's that over there? asked the Pooh, pointing toward the mirror. Tiger bounced over to the mirror. What a funny looking creature, he laughed, seeing his mirror image laughing. Tiger said, I'll teach that animal to laugh at me, he called at the tiger in the mirror, but when the tiger in the mirror growled back, the tiger became so frightened, he bounced right out of Pooh's, head, Pooh's house. Pooh thought he should stay awake and keep watch for other strange creatures like heifer lamps and the woozulus, but he was so tired, he fell asleep. He had a very strange dream about honey and the heifer lamps and the woozles, and as he dreamed, a heavy rain began to fall. The strange dream soon turned into a nightmare. Just as he dreamed he was drawing in honey, Pooh Bear woke up and found himself in a puddle, but not of honey. There was water everywhere. Oh no, my honey, yelled the Pooh. I mustn't let the water get into my heart, he jerks. Pooh quickly carried all of his precious honey jars to safety up in the big tree above his house. The rain continued to fall, and the hundred acre wood got wetter and wetter until it turned into a huge lake. All the climbing had made Pooh a bit hungry. I'd just have a little something, he heard, he said as he poked his nose into one of his, one of the jaws. While the Pooh was busy eating honey, the water continued to rise all the way up to the branch where the bear sat. A sudden wave of water knocked the Pooh over head first into the honey jar. It was quite a sight, with his legs kicking in the air. Floating nearby was Piglet, who was sitting on the kitchen chair. Is that you, Winnie the Pooh? shouted Piglet. It's me, Piglet. Can you hear me? 
Piglet was too busy trying to get the pool's attention to notice the waterfall up ahead. Both Pooh and Piglet cried out in alarm, but there was nothing they could do. They plunged down the roaring waterfall, tumbling over and over as they were tossed about by the falling water. When they landed safely in the river below, Pooh was floating onto the kitchen chair and Piglet was inside the honey jar. Luckily, Christopher Robin had been looking for his little friends and he soon had the water logged bear and the piglet safe on dry run. You rescued the piglet, Christopher Robin told Pooh. You are a hero. Once the flood waters had receded, Christopher Robin had a hero party for Pooh. He invited Rabbit, Kangaroo, and Little Roo, Piglet, Pooh, and even Tigger. Owl made a speech about Pooh's bravery, and everything seemed to be back to normal, at least for the moment. Several weeks later, while Rabbit was picking carrots in his garden, Tigger happened to bounce by. Oh no, groaned, gro groaned Rabbit when he saw Tigger bouncing in his cabbage patch. With every energetic bounce, Tigger smashed scattered or squashed some of Rabbit's favorite vegetables. Hello, Rabbit, shouted the tiger. Rabbit looked around at the scattered vegetables. Tiger, just look at what you've done to my beautiful garden, he shouted, waving his fist. Look, messy, isn't it? said Tiger, looking around him. You've ruined it, Tiger. It's your doing. You and your confounded to bouncing. Oh, why don't you ever stop bouncing? The angry rabbit demanded. Bouncing is what the tigers do best, Tigger answered. So rabbit turned to Piglet and Winnie the Pooh. I'm going to teach that tiger a lesson, he said. Let's take him for a long walk in the woods and lose him. Lose him? asked the Pooh. Or oh, we'll find him again the next morning, but it will take the bounce out of him, answered the rabbit. The next morning, they set off into the forest. As usual, Tiger bounced ahead of everyone. After a while, the three friends managed to lose Tiger, who bounced off into the misty forest. After waiting some time to be sure that Tiger was truly out of sight, Rabbit nudged Pooh and Piglet and they turned toward home. However, the mist had thickened and everything looked different than before. You know, Rabbit, said the Pooh Bear, I don't think we lost Tigger. I think we lost us. Tigger got home before his friends, and so it was that the lesson Rabbit wanted to teach Tigger backfired. When the first snowfall covered the hundred acre wood, little Wu waited anxiously for Tigger to come and take him out to play. Now you be careful, dear, said Wu's mother Kanga when Tigger arrived, and bring Wu home in time for his nap. She shouted as Tigger and Wu bounced off in the snow. Tigger and Wu reached the frozen pond. Can you ice skate, Tigger? asked Wu. Sure, ice, skate. ice skating is what the tigers do best, bragged Tigger as he glided across the ice. Soon Tigger was doing figure eights and even skating backward while Wu cheered him on. Tigger began to make more daring moves. He was so busy showing up, he didn't even see Rabbit in front of him. Oh no, not you, screamed Rabbit as Tigger came spinning toward him out of control. Look out, shouted Tigger. Out of my way, I can't, as he banged right into Rabbit. Stop, poor Rabbit, was sent flying through a snowbank and into his own house. Look, Tigger's head ice skating, said Tigger as he and Wu bounced into the woods. 
Can you climb a tree, tiger? Asked Toru. Climb a tree? Why? That's what the tigers do best. Only I don't climb trees. I bounce them. With Wu holding onto his shoulders, Tiger bounced from limb to limb of a tall tree. Higher and higher he bounced until he was as high as he could go. The last bounce was too much for Wu, who fell off his friend's shoulders. On the way down, Wu grabbed onto Tiger's tail and began to swing back and forth. This is fun, he shouted. I've never swung on a tiger's tail before. Hey, stop that, please. You are rocking the forest, said Tiger, as the tree began to sway dangerously. Wu let go of Tiger's tail and landed on a lower branch. What's wrong, Tiger? he asked. Oh, thank goodness. I was getting seasick, answered the Tiger. Just then, Pooh and Piglet spotted Tiger. Hello, shouted the tiger. Why, it's Tiger and Wu, said Pooh. What are you two doing up there, he shouted. We bounced up, but now Tiger is stuck, said Wu. Soon, Kanga and Rabbit arrived to see what all the shouting was about. Oh dear, exclaimed Kanga. Well, do be careful, Wu, and jump into my apron. I'll catch you, but try not to fall too first said Kanga. As she got ready to catch Wu, we, that was fun, giggled Wu, leaping down and landing in his mother's apron. Okay, you're next. Pooh and Rabbit shouted to Tiger, jump. Tigers don't jump, they bounce, said the Tiger, holding on tightly to the tree. Then bounce down, said Pooh. Don't be ridiculous, said Tiger. Tigers don't bounce down, they bounce up. Then climb down, shouted the rabbit impatiently. Tigers don't climb down, because, because. Their tails get in the way, answered the tiger, wrapping his tail around the tree. That settles it, rabbit, said the rabbit, who was actually enjoying the tiger's predic predicament. If he won't jump or climb down, he'll have to stay up there before, up there forever. Forever, yelled the tiger. Oh, I promise if I ever get down from this tree, I'll never bounce again. Never. Rabbit was thrilled. Did you hear that, everyone? He asked the gleefully. He promised. He said never. The friends decided that the best way to get Tigger down was for him to slide. So slowly and cautiously with their encouragement, Tigger slid down the tree. You can open your eyes now. You're safe, said the piglet as Tigger reached the bottom of the tree. Tigger was so happy to be back on the ground. He started to kiss the snow. I'm so happy. I feel like bouncing, he said, and he immediately began to bounce. Wait a minute. You promised, Tigger said the rabbit. Tigger sat down. I did? You mean I can never bounce again? Not even one teeny bounce? Rabbit and the others shook their heads. T Tiger sighed and sat on the nearby log. There was a long, sad silence. I like the old bouncy Tiger best, said the little Wu. So do we, agreed Kanga and Piglet. Of course, we all do, added Winnie the Pooh. Don't you agree, Rabbit? Well, um, all, all right, muttered Rabbit, with great reluctance. I guess I like the old bouncy tiger best. Oh boy, said Tiger, bouncing right on top of Rabbit. Come on, I'll teach you all how to bounce. Soon, Tiger and the others, including Rabbit, bounced off into the snowy hundred-acre wood together.